Hello, my name is Alex Burnett and I work at the Localization Institute. I'm thrilled to be joined today by Dr. Pong Wang, uh, instructor at the Localization Institute and also the co-author of a new book called Machine Learning and Translation with David B. Sawyer. The new book from Routledge Press will be available for pre-order on March 22nd this year, and it'll be published on April 12th. Links to the book page on the publisher's website are included in the caption in this video below on Localization Institute's YouTube channel, and also on Dr. Wang's course pages on the Localization Institute website at www.localizationinstitute.com. Dr. Wang, thank you very much for joining me today. It's great, as always, to see you. My pleasure. And thank you, Alex. You're so kind. And to say, like, help promote the book. I really appreciate it. Well, you're most welcome. And we're thrilled to have you here today. Before we begin our interview, I'd also like to mention that the next edition of Dr. Wang's Masterclass, uh, it's called the Machine Translation Masterclass, begins on March 2nd, 2023. More than 60 students from 15 different countries have already taken the class, and the feedback, feedback we've received has been really excellent. Uh, you can read testimonials um, for Dr. Wang and from former students about the class on the course page on our website, and the link to that is also included in the caption to this video. Please visit the course page for more information or email me at alex at localizationinstitute.com if you have any questions. Registration is open for the class beginning on March 22nd, March 2nd, and seats are filling quickly. Okay, now that we've introduced both the book and the masterclass, I'm excited to ask you some questions about both of them, Dr. Wang. Sure. First off, machine, machine learning and translation has been a passion of yours for a long time. Your research has taken you from the Corpus Research Lab at Northern Arizona University to the University of Maryland and on to your current position as a part-time professor at the University of Ottawa, to name just a few of your roles. Can you tell us a little bit about your personal journey in this field? How did you get so interested in machine translation and when did, when did you exactly decide to make this your career? Yeah, so Alex actually you have already given the answer just now when you introduced the class. And you said we have uh, 60, over 60 students from 15 countries and the students uh, feedback. And so that is the one of the biggest motivation for me to pursue this, uh, this career path because I'm always interested in human beings. I'm interested in how to help people uh, to learn in a better and a more efficient way. And uh, that's the biggest motivation. And But because I wanted to draw the parallels between human aspect and the machine aspect of uh, translation to problems like translation and education, so that's the reason why I need to dig into uh, the science and engineering aspect. And that journey turns out to be very rewarding. And I found that a lot of things we we see that similar uh, from the outside that they are totally like different things. But if you look inside, there were so many things that they overlap. And so that's one of the reason uh, why I pursue this journey. So I'd like to flush out that a little bit more. Um, I know that your focus, you, you've you always been stressing the human element and the connection uh, that it has to machine learning. Can you talk a little bit more about what you mean by this exactly? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it means that like human mind is a structuring mechanism. And when we say like we we always want to pursue the truth, like what is artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? But actually what really plays a decisive role is human mind, because we don't passively summarize what we see, what the reality is. We actively process the things and using our mind. So I think we should, and we must, keep the same thing, like keep the human's dominant role. And no matter how advanced machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, is, and to achieve this goal, and we need to do our homework, we need to improve our AI competence. And the goal is not just those people who can build the system are able to 
play a dominant role, but also regular people like you and like a lot of domain experts, and they are able to perform the same tasks, even without a, a lot of coding skills or even with no coding skills. And so that's what I mean by human elements. So we want to democratize AI knowledge, AI skills, and so that we can put this technology in the hands of more people. Fascinating. So I know that the first part of the book explores this connection of how humans and machines approach translations in different ways. Um, I believe the second part uh, introduces some of the key tasks, including um, machine translation, translation assessment and quality, and also other natural language processing or NLP tasks. Um, the third part then focuses on the role of data in those processes. Can you talk a little bit about who the book is intended for and, and what uh, readers can expect to come, come away with? Is this written for translators, for localization managers? Can you explain? Yeah, we call domain experts. So that includes like translators, localization project managers in the language industry, those who understand the profession very well, um, but those who knows how to best use the technology and put the right technology in the right place. And so uh, in the past, there are a lot of like artificial intelligence or machine learning uh, textbooks or uh, or uh, professional books targeted the computer scientists, uh, but this book is for domain experts, I even see. though it will help those computer scientists or engineers to understand more about the expertise and domain uh, knowledge in this field. Great. Thanks for that explanation. So you've published over 30 articles, and this will be your, your third book. I also want to mention that you're leading Loke World's new Edu and Loke uh, initiative, which is really aiming to connect uh, the translation and localization industry directly with academic institutions, um, and that with the goal uh, of helping to better prepare students for the actual roles and skills that global companies desperately need. Can you tell us a little bit about what Edu and Loke is working on in 2023, and what is really the mission for this initiative? Yeah, so the mission for this initiative is to bridge the gap between the industry and academia. And actually, uh, in 2023, we have my colleagues are working on fantastic uh, projects like uh, the, they are launching the survey to bridge the gap between academia and the industry. And that was led by Berlin and uh, Stefan and Tabia and uh, Steve. And then we have like Jeanne and John Ristoff and they're leading a project that's to put together curriculum uh, in different uh, universities and so that people can learn from our effort and what is the best way to uh, to uh, upgrade and to revise their curriculum. And also we have Ulrich and uh, Ricky and to work on the videos. And so a lot of people see say that they don't understand what is exactly it means by localization. And they produce uh, the videos and that was interviewed mostly at Lock Road all over the world. And uh, me, and uh, Dr. Pete Smith and uh, uh, from the University of Texas and uh, and Marcus Mizo from SAP and we are working on AI education uh, project. So uh, when we say AI education project, at first we found that is focused on university, but you know with ChatGPT and the new artificial intelligence, uh, uh, wider acceptance by the general public, and we realize that we, on the one hand, we need to broaden the concept of uh, education because education include not only in the university setting in the classroom but also a lifelong learning. Like everybody needs to learn new, new technology, new knowledge, and because the technology just empower them to be able to absorb information so quickly. And on the other hand, we also wanted to narrow down and we do not cover a lot of things in uh, AI education. So we actually uh, focus on AI competence and that competence is based on like learning 
learning outcome framework that include uh, AI knowledge, AI skills, and AI attitude. Great, and it's just so exciting to see the Edu and Lope idea um, really blossoming and and getting more and more people from around the world uh, and from major global companies involved in this initiative. Uh, I know that you're also planning another. Uh, you've held a couple of these MTAI roundtables, which I believe are rebranding now. I love the new name, Multilingual AI Roundtable, and uh, the next one will be taking place in Malmo, Sweden, as part of Lope World 49. I believe it's mm -hmm. going to be on Tuesday. June 6th, which is the Global Toolbox Days. Can you say a little bit about uh, how the roundtable is developed and, and, and what's coming up in Sweden? Yes, that's great. Yes. So you mentioned that we changed the name from MTAI Roundtable to Multilingual AI. And the reason is because now we call Artificial General Intelligence. AGI has opened a new alternative to how we are going to approach localization, approach the activities in the language industry. And in the past, we focused on MT, but actually MT is related to a lot of other supporting technologies. And we, we know that there's translation memory, terminology management, and project management. But AGI led us to think that if we can put all the language, natural language tasks uh, into one model, rather than just we use different models and integrate it them together, uh, centering around machine translation. So this is a very, very interesting area. And I think it will be uh, play a decisive role in the future as to what we want to do in the long run and to make our industry even more productive. And so, so that's what we're going to discuss. And I really am very excited to see what we're going to find out during our roundtable discussions. And it's been really exciting. Uh, the first two, uh, first one was in July and last year in Berlin, and the second one was in San Jose in November. It was really exciting for me to watch the way that the participants, people from all different um, levels of experience and and different roles within industry and academia, academia coming together and really workshopping ideas and talking best practices together. Uh, just a really fascinating event, and I'm excited to see um, how the next one goes in Sweden as well. To turn our attention to the masterclass now, so the roundtable is really designed for um, practitioners and also uh, beginners as well. It's about sharing knowledge and stuff in a in more of a workshop setting. But if if there are people out there who are looking for actual training and a better understanding, like a kind of a um, an entry level understanding of machine translation, that's why you created the machine translation masterclass for us uh, two years ago. We've already run it uh, five times and had, as we mentioned, fifty students from six countries. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm curious. Can you tell, talk a little bit about your experience and what it's been like teaching your class? Um, how has your interactions with the the students in the class helped you? to improve the course. Yeah, so um, there were a lot of things we can say, uh, but I would say that I would like to emphasize that this class is dynamic and we always absorb the new information and integrate uh, the new information into our uh, class. It's like, uh, for example, the next version, we're going to talk about ChatGPT and how ChatGPT uh, opens, like I said just now, a new alternative for us to approach MT and uh, because ChatGPT also offers uh, machine translation functions. And I've already heard that a lot of people have already started to explore the possibility of using AGI like ChatGPT to uh, explore uh, MT option. And another thing I want to emphasize is um, in the past or in conventional education, and we always want to like to educate people, empower people with the best knowledge and skills. That's very good. But I would say that's far from enough. And we should not stop there. And education actually should be also be productive. And if you look at a lot of AI projects nowadays, and it's mostly come from research lab. 
It comes from education setting. So it is one area that can fast turn knowledge into productivity and into something that really can help you do things. So my goal is always not just to, to teach you the knowledge, but also after that, I should be able to empower you to do something productive in your in your uh, work. So so that's the most exciting part. And yeah. uh, um, make something productive and based on the knowledge you have absorbed. And that's that will make me very happy if my students uh, can really apply the knowledge immediately into their work environment. And the feedback we've heard is that people people are they 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 graduate your course and they go back to their their um, workflows at their own organizations and they've been able to like implement a lot of these things that you're teaching very quickly. Um, you mentioned uh, Chat GPT and these AGI models. I mean, it is amazing the rate of change in the industry. How do you keep up with it? And um, you know, is this never ending? Are we going to get to um, a level of proficiency, or do you think this will continue to just evolve and evolve? So I think a person's passion is the most important part. And because once you have the motivation, and I talked about AI competence and out of knowledge skills, and what is really matters for a person is your attitude. And if you are willing, if you're passionate about, you, if you're curious about what, what it really looks like and what is the truth beneath it, what, what is the truth the future will lead us to? And ne nothing can stop you from, um, from pursuing this truth. And so I think that's, that's the way that really motivate me and drive me forward because I don't feel like it's my own things. I feel like it's a humanity things. It's like, like I'm just a common, a regular person. I'm doing something that every other person would do or they are willing to do. So I'm very happy to be a representative in this regard. Well, Dr. Wang, we're so thrilled to have you as a faculty member at the Localization Institute. We're really excited for the publication of your new book. Um, I know it's going to have a very big impact in um, the MT world and on, on people in the industry. Um, we're also really excited for the next edition of your masterclass, which starts on March 2nd. Thanks so much to, for taking time with me, to Dr. Wang, and I really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate the viewers for watching this interview as well. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang. My pleasure. Thank you, Alex.